I'm Jennifer Polly. I'm from Worldwide Express, and later on, um, shortly, I'll tell you kind of who, who we are as a company and, and what we did for Joe um, currently, and Peter, who's here today, actually. Hopefully, he only has good things to say. Um, but essentially, in, in talking to kind of both of them and in talking to people that just aren't traditional shippers, um, the next, the couple things we're going to go over, um, just kind of give you an idea of how the industry works, so that you guys can start to guide yourself and your product to market in the best lane that you choose, so whether that be the post office or UPS or freight shipping or overnight or ground, or there's a myriad of options for you. Um, I heard somebody talking about websites earlier. Shipping can be integrated into a website where you don't even have to deal with it anymore. Your customer makes a purchase, he clicks on everything, it's kind of like an Amazon works like an Amazon kind of thing. So there's all kinds of options out there, even for the small guys. Um, and again, we'll talk more about my company later and kind of what we do, but we are in the market to work with the small guys, which is why I'm here. So thank you for having me. Um, so just really quickly, um, basic things that you want to consider, and again, like I said, this is kind of off the cuff, so I'll, I'll, I'm kind of getting looking at my notes and stuff too. Um, basic things you want to consider is in, in the shipping world is you have two options. You really have a package world and a freight world. Package world is your um, anything from 150 pounds back to an envelope. Um, it's anything going overnight. You know your basic UPS services, two day, three day, ground, um, air freight overseas can even be, or excuse me, not air freight, but air shipments overseas um, can you know, go from a package to a freight. So um, those are the things you need to look at when you're looking at your own products. And and, and weight based is your very first first thing to consider. And, Am I shipping things over $150 or 150 pounds? Yes, we're going to move that by truck. Most of the things lighter than that, you're going to look at package. Um, your UPS is in the world. I'm, I'm, of course, a UPS girl, so you'll hear that come out of me quite a bit. Um, packaging, big, big, big deal. Shipping is a human driven industry. The guys driving those trucks, the guys picking that package up, they're touching it. Um, UPS prides itself in that every package is only touched twice at pick up and delivery. I have been to Worldport in, Louis in Louisville. It is incredible. They are not, they are not kidding. Um, the only guys touching a UPS package are the guys that pick it up at your place and the guys that deliver it. Um, everything else is conveyor belts, all automated. Um, but again, at the end of the day, it's human driven. Um, so there's going to be problems. There's going to be accidents. You need to be prepared for those kinds of things. And packaging is your first line of defense. Um, at the end of the meeting as well, I, I have a local contact in Charleston, West Virginia, local owned West Virginia business that does custom packaging. You can do your logos and everything. I even brought one of those catalogs with me if anybody would like to check it out. Joe is currently using them. Um, very, very low cost with even free delivery everywhere. So I'll put you in contact with somebody that can help you with that sort of thing as well. Um, get a scale. I cannot preach that enough. Get a scale, get a scale, get a scale. Because at the end of the day, what you want to do is pass off your costs to your customer. If you've miscalculated that weight or that dimension, you're getting hit in the pocketbook. Not your customer, but you are. So um, a scale can be picked up for 30 bucks somewhere. You know, that's, that's a crucial crucial piece. Doing the homework and doing the stuff ahead of the game, measuring all your products as boxed, not just, oh, here's my glassware. And then we're going to add a two-pound box. That changes everything. So package it as if you're going to send it and really get it all together, get all the dimensions, all the weight, and you're ready to go. And then you're ahead of the game. Um, saves you every time you make a sale. So it saves you every time down the road. Um, outbound and inbound. Something for you guys to consider, especially like maybe the pottery artists here, um, paint supplies, brushes, everything. A lot of people only think of shipping as what they're sending out. If you're incurring any costs for anything coming in, be it on a truck, be it on um, UPS or FedEx truck, you have the right to take control of that and to take control of those costs. Working with somebody like me, we can lay in some incentivized pricing. I, I will take a look at what you're actually paying. Lay in some pricing that beats that, if I can. Um, and then you just, you know, when you make an order, you say, hey, here's my UPS number. Or hey, if that's coming on a pallet, I have a company that I work with. I'm going to have them create this shipment for us. Um, then they ship it on your bill. You know you're getting the right rate. Because um, at the end of the day, it's a retail business for a lot of people. You know, they have somebody doing the stuff in the back of their business, so they're approaching that as well. So that brings us to essentially the UPS side of the game, your package. Um, again, just to reiterate, it's anything less than 150 pounds. Um, whether that be a giant box, small box, whatever it is, 150 pounds is all that UPS driver is going to pick up. Anything over that, they're going to want that on a truck. 
And to be quite honest, um, I'll use a, a Peter example, actually. Um, Peter and Joe, both, let's say you both have seven or eight packages going to the same gallery. Which I actually just talked to Joe about this, as a matter of fact. Call it 75 bucks per package ground, because if they're large, they're heavy. Um, what I suggested to Joe was that we palletize all of those together and move them on a truck. So say Joe paid, again, call it 75 bucks per package for six, seven packages. My freight rate to New Jersey on one pallet would have been 130 bucks. So all of a sudden, you just went from, you know, 700 bucks to 100 and some change. It's night and day. So just knowing that, you know, take my card, take my number. When those things come up, reach out and check because those are the things that a, a company like mine always can really kind of nitpick for you and find out what's best for you guys. Um, so, so less than 150 pounds is going to go package. Um, again, packaging. I can't, I, I, I even say on the slide here, yes, I'm repeating myself because it's crucial. We have had a mistake with Peter. Um, it's human driven. Joe has had a lamp smashed and he packs it flat and does it right. It's going to happen. <clears throat> you have to prepare for it. Um, buy the insurance. I think the smallest, I think it's like a buck 50 minimum or some buck 20 minimum on a UPS package. Pay the insurance. It's worth it. Um, we'll talk more about that here in a second as well. The insurance I can bring to the table is a little bit different. Um, it's like a Geico all-in full coverage retail value, not just your product uh, cost. So say you make something for 50 bucks cost, you retail it for 200, we're gonna insure that for 200 bucks, not just what you have in it. So, um, and that's unusual in the industry, quite frankly. Um, so we, we kind of have some options out there as well. And that's both on package and freight, we'll get there. Um, your standard boxes, um, you see them every day in every business across the world. The, the UPS envelope, the UPS small, medium, and large box. UPS even has the cardboard boxes you can order. The small, medium, large boxes and the envelopes, all that can be ordered for free. Once you have a UPS account number, you can just jump online and order all that for free. Uh, custom packaging. Here's a cool thing for you guys, especially since we're all we're small businesses and you're trying to get your name and, and brand out there. You can order customized packaging with your logo, um, Tamara Artist Foundation, or whatever it is, your logo actually on the package. So instead of like the back being this big UPS thing, it would just have your logo. Um, so there's all, there's all kinds of really cool little things you can do that really drive your brand and your business home as it's getting out to market. Um, <clears throat> all right, so that brings me to dimensional weight and the, the custom packaging that you guys, I would imagine most of you are involved in because of things like odd shaped furniture and stuff like that. So you're not going to fall into the perfect 4x4x4 four 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 box. Um, the industry has gone to dimensional pricing for anything outside of the envelope. Um, and when you log into UPS.com or the system that we use that can bundle the freight UPS for you, and we'll talk more about that in here in a second, um, as long as you put in the right dimensions, it will calculate this for you so you don't have to be a mathematician. You just have to really know your measurements. Um, so dimensional weight, what that is, is it no longer is about a 10 pound box. 10 pound this big, 10 pound this big. It's about the dimensions of the box and the volume. Um, so you, we use an example in the industry, the refrigerator box full of feathers. You're paying for the space on the truck, essentially. If you ship a refrigerator box full of feathers, UPS is going to look at you like you're crazy because they see this giant box and they say, oh my gosh, this weighs three pounds. There's no possible way. Um, and it's taking up way more space on my truck than what three pounds is going to take up. So I'm going to charge you what that box should weigh which is the dimensional weight. So right here we have um, domestic, anything staying in the United States, it's length times width times height divided by 166. And then anything going out internationally, it's length times width times height divided by 139. And that's whether it's with FedEx, UPS, doesn't matter, it's, it's rules of the game. Um, which brings me back to you, since there is two players in the game, they match identical. Fees, service types, everything, otherwise one will put the other out of business. So I'm, I'm I'm interested in learning a little bit more about that. Um, so just know that what I'm telling you now, even if you were to speak to a FedEx rep or somebody else, it should all be identical in the game. Okay, everything matches. Otherwise, like I said, one of them will be shut down. Um, so Peter and I, Peter brought this up earlier. He, he was asking about, okay, so he knows his package dimensionally weighed out, let's call it, ships for 90 pounds, even if it weighs 15, 20. 
Um, essentially, what he can do in that box is pack it up to 90 pounds without changing the price because UPS already expects that dimensionally to weigh 90 pounds. So if he's got four or five tables that he can nest in there instead of just two, fine and dandy. As long as it doesn't cross that 90 pound dimensional threshold, the price is the same. So once you've figured out what your dimensional weight is of your packaging, just know that you can pile it in until you hit that magic number. Once you cross that 90 pound threshold in that example, then the price is gonna climb a little bit. 50 cents, two bucks, three bucks. The way our pricing works, it's not a huge jump until you start going 10, 20, 30 pounds deeper. Um, so it's, it's yeah. but just know that that, that exists. Um, the next bullet point kind of hints at what you were mentioning earlier in that oversized piece. Um, two times the width plus two times the length. If it's greater than 130, then that is considered oversized and problematic. On the next slide, it talks about service types, or various service types, or different pickup options with UPS. Um, again, FedExes are identical. If you're, if you're a FedEx fan, we're gonna edit all the FedEx stuff out there, right? <laughs> um, that's all gonna go with. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I need to be legit and actually let you all know what your true options are out there. Um, they all match identical, they just have a different name. Uh, I just want to make a note on some of these. Next day early a.m. and next day air, delivered by 8 a.m. and delivered by 10 a.m. Um, a lot of the places that you're going to, your residential areas, your rurals, most of your galleries are going to be okay if you pick one of those two options, but at the end of the day, you really need to ask yourself if it's worth it. it does that guy really have to have that at 8 a.m. in the morning? Um, it's not probably not going to get there by 8 or 10 a.m. if it's a rural residential. Don't waste the money. If it's got to be there next day, do next day saver. That's by the close of business. It's usually around 3 o'clock when that UPS driver's making his last pickup of the day. It's 3, 4 o'clock. It's going to get there anyway. So um, that's a big deal too. Timing and when it needs to be there because all that just changes price. I think by next day air saver rate say it's 25 bucks, that next day early a.m. can be 75. It's a huge chunk of change difference. Um, your pickup options, you can have a pickup scheduled every day, you can pick your days, you can call it in, phone a friend. Um, the system we use, will you can schedule it from right within there. If you use ups.com, you can schedule it right there. You can call the terminal, you can drop it at the UPS store. A million ways to get a package out the door. Um, and again, the UPS box is your best friend. If you have a smaller thing, your jewelry makers and things like that, your paintings, um, maybe if you're doing a roll or something like that, if it'll go in that box, they'll take it. So it doesn't matter. Um, which is a big difference as well with FedEx and UPS. You have one driver with UPS. Um, FedEx has um, a driver for air, a driver for ground, a driver for overnight, a driver, like you could have seven trucks showing up in any given day, whereas you're just gonna have a one-stop shop um, with UPS and the post office and like that. Um, also, you probably heard the rumors, UPS busts up packages more than FedEx. We ship twice as much as FedEx. We are actually two times the size when it comes to package. So yeah, those numbers look a little skewed because we do double the volume. Um, when you look at that versus the post office and everything, they all, I, they're all identical. Human industry. Something somewhere is gonna get messed up. Just make sure you have that insurance on it and you be prepared. No matter who you use, something somewhere is going to get damaged. So, um, but we do. We uh, UPS actually moves double the amount of packages of FedEx every single day. So we have double the amount of incidences naturally. Murphy's law. <laughs> um, options, options, options. Besides your service types and your pickups, um, you have many ways to get it done. Um, did you know if you hand write a label, that's an automatic five dollar charge on anything going overnight? No matter who you talk to, you handwrite that label, five bucks all day long. Um, but UPS.com, WorldShip, Campus, v, uh, Quantum View, Campus Ship, there's all sorts of different things you can put on, packages, and all, all sorts of different places you can make labels and, and get that package together. Um, SpeedShip is our proprietary system. It is a super simple web-based tool. You have one tag for package, one tag for freight. You can get quotes from over 200 different trucking companies with my company in two clicks of a mouse. A couple zip codes, weight class, and we'll get to that in a second. We get to freight here 